Welcome. Michael Wickerson here at Wickerson Studios. I'm going to be trying to show as least painful as possible a way to use Chat GPT and Grasshopper to keep everything in the canvas as much as possible. The best way to learn this, um, since Chat GPT is going to start charging everybody $40 a month, and I'd like to kind of support this through my creativity as I'm looking to get a few more Patreons. And what I have set up is basically video YouTube channels that are always available for free, uh, GitHub files that this is a private repo currently, but every month I'll put my creative uh, CS scripts for Visual Studio Code and my GH files and user objects out. Uh, right now, these are what I've generated since pretty much Friday last week, and it all is sparked by this chat GPT node, which Peter Davis sent me, which is a JSON file of getting that node up and running. So that's available to you, and that's open source. I got that. You don't have to sign up to get a copy of that. But if you want to see my creative ideas, you want to look there. Um, I do have a Patreon. There's many tiers. You pay the 3, the 9, whatever you want. Uh, 10, I think it's up to $15 if you're interested to support it. And you will have to have some knowledge of the Rhino Common API. You'll have to maybe jump over there. So the YouTube channels, uh, just do a YouTube search. That's basically it, but you want to get at these files. What I have going is this script. And what I do with most of my scripts to make things interesting is I not only have what I refer to as my oscillation engine, which runs off a of sine and cosine because that's just plain beautiful. Uh, living as a natural person on the planet, everybody understands that things come in waves. And then I have a bake engine, which is just a simple logic, which is based on, um, actually, I don't even need that there. That's Ryasis uh, C node on building NURBS curves. But basically, it's just an is even. Um, node that I wrote which would produce true and false and I put it through the same kind of data counter. So when you set up those, uh, those are nice little tools which are available to you. The other things you'll need, and right now I have it on a button tool so I can just relay it and bake it here. Um, you will write a panel of loosely what you want to do. Write a C sharp script for the following pseudocode for the C node in Grasshopper for Rhino 3D. Create a script that generates a beautiful or beautiful trigonometric curves for the keel, hull, and ribs of a boat. That's all I typed. And from Peter Davis, you will have to set in a text for, from your open AI key, which I'm not going to share with you, which is hidden in here, which won't come up because you won't be able to call my file because you're not on my computer. Um, you hit true and you run through this script, which Peter Davis had generated, and you can access through Peter Davis or online or get it through this page as well. Um, and I've sent it to everybody that I kind of know. Um, but that will basically uh, set to true receive and then take your question and every time you run it this is what's amazing it will produce a panel uh, as I go to true that will be different ChatGPT is just chatting away to you and if you don't like or think there's bugs in one then run it um, from false to true again send it in again it's taking a little time to think I don't know what it's thinking about it's just trying to build a keel and it wrote in a totally different way and what you're going to find out is you have to learn to talk to ChatGPT to get it to do what you want. Now you have a loose pseudo script that may or may not work. Now, I do have a few links. This is one that I'm using the Parasite node, uh, which is a plugin. And of course, I offer these all to you. You'll have to download them. Script Parasite. It's going to go to this file. And Jose Luis from Parametric Camp wrote this one, which is a little script that basically lets me set that to a folder that's similar to where this one's being saved. And if I toggle that to true, so if I toggle that to true, that's going to take this node, whatever it's grouped with, so I have this grouped and I have it set under blob, or actually box outline, and that's able to be watching that script. And if you go to this script, while this is true, you don't want to be typing and changing the name of it because it keeps baking a new named file. Uh, it keeps making, not baking, but keeps creating a CS file that you can open in Open Studio. So yeah, I'm offering all this. Now, if you prime a C node, because this is basically just a math node, that I've set some inputs and, as, uh, uh, and type access um, and what kind of types there are. What did I just do? I did something, surface blah, 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 blah. I just changed the frequency node type hint to something that it wasn't. Did I just change that? That's interesting what I just did. Let me hit undo. No, I did something within the node that I just offset it <laughs> and screwed it up. So let's check our type on this integer. 
what did I just do? I guess I could read it, but boy, did I ever just hit something. The surface, I changed amplitude the surface accidentally, and I want amplitude to be a double. So if you're not, don't have the basics of this down, so now it's running. Um, you could go in, double click, and write your C script. And you could cut and paste, but this is where the UI isn't set up. You cannot cut and paste this because you cannot grab the text, as far as I know, out of a panel. Like if it's being outputted. I can't double click on here and open it up and get to this text and I can't highlight it. But that's not the point. The point is to learn to talk to GPT, to Visual Studio Code, and learn to write in C Sharp. So this code will create every time this is watching this little file, this script parasite, which basically I'm just outputting three curves, which mimic the hull, the ribs, and the keel of a ship. That's all this is doing. But I didn't write the code in the polynomials to solve this. I didn't write the equations. Let's see how this node wrote itself. Well, from looking here, I knew I'm going to need certain things as inputs. So I actually preset the number points, the amplitude, frequency, and phase shift, which is just going through pi. I could have hard-coded it within the equation, but I thought maybe I'd send it through different phases. And then I adjusted the amplitude to fit kind of standard what the pseudocode was telling me. But I'm going to write this script from Visual Studio. So when you are using script Parasite, you end up getting... Uh, every time you're saving the file, you end up getting a CS file. And since this one's called... Uh, floor plan, um, Acropolis floor plan number 17, because that's actually should be 18 now, because I've saved it under 18, but it was actually 017. I can go here, go to 17, right click, and open with Visual Studio. Open with, oh, why isn't it? That, oh, what did I, oh, that's a, sorry, I didn't grab the right one. I want to grab Acropolis floor plan open with Visual Studio, and there you go, you've opened it. Now, I pay for GitHub Copilot, 10 bucks a month, which is to improve upon what they're gonna charge me chat GPT a month. So I'm already up to 50 bucks a month to make this work. But with this pseudocode over here, I can ignore all the script, I can just go to the comment lines, and as long as I prime it with this, what I asked initially, I can use this to loosely write code in here and as you can tell as I go um, if I went in right here which is what I was doing I have my github copilot on so it is predicting what would come next in the script so if I needed another double say for an input it's going to tell me oh you need a keel amplitude times the sign and do this but I actually technically had I thought a keel beforehand but maybe it wasn't made so you're improving upon the chat GPI, GPI, uh, GPT uh, chatting to you to getting down to what really GitHub Copilot does incredibly well. So it's a tab and enter kind of process through a script. When you hit save and you overwrite that, you can close that out and that will update in this script. So now you're fine tuning from your inputs, your outputs, changing them. And what is absolutely fantastic, and I have to remind people of this, is if you set your inputs and outputs for a node and it sees those and you literally write them in here, you can start with your outputs, have your inputs, and that script you will just prime with text will write itself. As uh, Jose Luis says at Parametric Camp, mind blown when you think of this. So basically you come up with some curves and then you're right back into what you want to do with your old grasshopper style stuff, which is basically I just scripted this, did a few mirror techniques, took it through a couple of planes, did another mirror through the bottom, brought it together, took that geometry and ran it through my oscillation angle pi, which is if you follow that back, you go right to my oscillation, which is giving you these ones and zeros. And actually that's just taking my sign data so it's the top one, negative, and it's kind of slowly creeping. And those are nice little tools that I think I got from Gediminas Kardikas. I should give them credit. Everybody's kind of piggybacking on this. So as we creep through there and do the rotation of what's happening, it's just a simple orientation onto a grid. You can see how fast moving this is, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you can put it through to something. Subdivisions work. You could jitter this. You could randomize this. You can take it through different oscillations. If you didn't want it to go through a full two pi, it could just go through a little bit or it could work in the negative. And the bake item is really cool because as we're looking here, I can follow that back 
to this kind of toggle like if I wanted to bake that whole iteration there that whole iteration has been made there it is and if I wanted to bake double oh I shouldn't have hit that hit the wrong one let's just take it to a bake and take it to another bake now I've doubled look at how fast this is generating to build forms and then if I wanted to bypass this take this button down here and say okay I don't want my button toggle to be activated I think you can disable a button toggle and then I want to activate to my true false little let's let's remember what this is called this is my bake engine which is just using a simple C sharp script of testing if a number is even and odd I'll we'll show you the script of that one hardly needing anybody to do that um, keep in mind that I ran through and used Raya Isis page and went absolutely crazy somewhere in here a couple years ago while I was going crazy on github uh, sorry, going crazy on GH Python Remote and all these other things, is I literally just sat here and wrote out whole white papers as scripts that I could jump into a class. Um, and these were coming from all the works that people had done before me. So let's take this bake over here. But while we do that, let's see what happens when I do that. Um, this is going to start baking as a true false as it goes. And look at the speed at which this is actually generating and baking. And it's actually a little frozen up on me. Or... Yeah, the bake is true and false as it's rotating around. And I'm not showing you the, uh, yeah, I am showing you the one that it's actually baking. This is true. This might have uh, a little problem here that I've got this one disabled. So let me just disconnect this one. I think the disabled is actually causing a problem. So take that one off. And now we should see some baking as we go. I thought we would. True, false, bake all the way over here. And it might be that there's so much action going on, we just need to see what's happening. And, oh, I know what's happened. My timer, because I've been talking too long, I had it set to a certain amount of uh, data recorder. So let's reset it. And there you go. Now it's baking every 20 milliseconds as it goes. You're getting this wonderful rotated mesh form that, believe me, it's like what exactly is happening here. So you have this wonderful way of automation to get into this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and this is just getting more and more complicated as we talk but think of the mesh going into here and there you go and then we're starting another series right here underneath and it's just continuing. So I'm going to try and out click that. It's a little mad at me but look it's baking again as it goes. And I could turn that timer off and I could turn that off as an oscillation and I backed a whole series of things based on the creativity involved in just saying like, okay, what about the design of big pens, Spartan helmets, sh uh, chairs, shoes? But keep in mind, you can go back in, whatever was hard-coded, whatever you used as a template to get in here and write with or without GitHub Copilot because you don't trust this fully and you have to make some exceptions. Like even then when I was writing my other scripts, sometimes you have to get to con some concatenation. But your basic Grathopper strips on this side can really be jived up as to what they're doing. So I'm just going to highlight this for a second and get rid of it. It's just sitting there as its original objects. They still might be oscillating, but I took my oscillation off and I have my simple bake. And you'll find I, I continually am doing stuff like this uh, that keeps those two engines. So as you trickle through here and take a look at the files I'm offering, which are all of these files, um, all uh, and, and just since Friday, like I said, I started from this initial one, which was the file that um, let me open it hopefully it opens in here and doesn't open up another session of Rhino which it might very well do um, ah, I should have gone here and just said file open and open that initial file on chat GPT and that's the one that Peter Davis put out I know other people were working on it last week when it came and it's just a really fun program that you know Oh, I knew it was opening another uh, session of Rhino, but I don't need that open. Hang on a second. Uh, just give me a second. I think I closed the wrong one. Yeah. I think I closed the one I was working on, which is fine. We'll give it a second. I'm sorry about this. I, I, I usually have too many things going on at once. My life is chaotic enough. I just got back from teaching today, and I'm trying to show the power of GPT as we go into it. So let's just jump in, and there it is. So what I have in this script, and you don't need anything like this to run this. You really just need your grasshopper. 
And for some reason, I'm having no problem getting on OpenAI this morning while other people were blocked. So the original one was write a statement for LinkedIn that shows how useful it is to have a chat GPT and Grasshopper 3D coding environment. And that's what Peter put together. You put down your text key. You got to put it into a file somewhere where you can get to it. You can see there's how I trace it. Uh, it then generates this script. And I went through all of these questions asking, what's the future of Grasshopper? What's going on in my program at KCAI? Are we doing computation? Is it okay for my son to bench 605 pounds at 100 pounds? Um, will my younger son and youngest daughter stop fighting ever? Is this a linear equation? If not, should I be using this to study? And write an artist statement for me. And of course, you could add whatever you want. So it's a great node. Now, what I found, and I'm just going to throw it out there, is this is the node that got me going. It was the evaluate node, which everybody remembers. And you'll remember this takes text from a panel. But you also have to fine tune and learn and write iterations of the panel until it works with that node. And that means you can work with polynomials, which is fantastic, and equations, and all the things that we're doing in coding. But you probably want to extend this, um, obviously, into the C Sharp or the, or the Python nodes and things like that. So that said, I think we've got a very exciting thing. This is it, uh, and it is manufacturing these forms, which are doing their do-si-do. -si -do. I'll put it back on rotation, and actually it's going on the rotation and the bake. Let me kill the bake, and we'll just put it back to rotation, and it's sticking with the very simple idea of what a keel is. So allow yourself the freedom to come in here and i know i'm zipping around a lot recognize what i have a little oscillation program a little bake thing you don't need that you really just need the github copilot and you've got enough text that you could write to the c node if you trust it i don't so i actually want to use the script parasite i want to script over in visual studio code with github copilot which i trust more and i want to stay focused on simple things like vectors and points to start and in time I'll move on to Raya Ice's uh, classes beyond structs to deal with um, writing breps and curves and what Rhino is so good at. The possibilities are endless. Please get in here if you want to support me. Uh, like I said, it's starting to add up. It's going to be 50 bucks a month just to do these creatively. Um, I'll make them public after a little while. I started with just a simple idea of a floor plan of the Acropolis. Now I'm moving on to the keel hull of a boat, keels and hulls of a boat. And I'll probably just go to objects that I've always wanted to make. Architecturally, I'll keep it updated. This video will be the most recent video on here. And if you know the history of everything I've played with, this is just a total game changer. I was struggling with, you know, obviously Flask and Hop servers and getting people trained in those things and chat and Python 2.0 versus Python 3.0. I did learn that the chat GPT and a couple of people are really working on the Flask Hopper in the Grasshopper with the chat GPT. So that's going to be pretty wild when all of a sudden you can just put in your outcomes and it's using all of those machine learning algorithms and libraries to solve your problem. Absolutely outstanding stuff. Please support me if you like. Uh, throw anything you want at me, and I will link you up with the current, most recent uh, pages. And I've got tons on here for you to go back, and most of them are all, uh, the repos are very public. So it's a good history of what's happened in the last three years. A lot of hopping around, a lot of math, a lot of calculus, a lot of Python, um, and all that stuff I find interesting. And if you want to get in here, um, I'll help you out. So thanks very much for watching. Michael Wickerson at Wickerson Studios. And I will stop streaming and I will stop recording.